It's early morning at the University of Washington. The sun has just cracked the horizon. The lake is calm and still. But the Conibear Shell House is buzzing. Water's beautiful. Coxswains, we're gonna go to the Space Needle. Go straight through the cut. And for the Husky women's crew, it's time to get to work. As they just go nice and slow. The shells cut through the lake with ease, but it takes hard work to make it look so effortless. Separate and flow. Yes, nice. Guiding the team through today's workout is head coach Yasmin Farouk, or Yaz, as she's called. The core is connecting your hand to the blade. She's laser focused, analyzing every stroke as they progress through the practice. This is my eighth year at Washington. I was at Stanford for 10 years before that, and I was on the US team for eight years. She was also a two-time Olympian. Rowing's a power endurance sport. Keep your body level, body level. So we have to train a lot of systems, and that's why we literally train all year round. So there's certainly the aerobic capacity is important, and you train that by doing a lot of what we call steady state, or low intensity miles. Then there's also power, which you need to get off the line and to be able to sprint. So we do a lot of lifting. We lift two to three times a week, depending on the time of year. And then there are the intangibles. It's the people. And it is what they are willing to do for one another. The character that they have, like that transcends everything else. That's the most important. The unwavering determination of today's teams can be traced back to the early pioneers of the sport. The history of the University of Washington women's program is exceptional. It's always been defined by these women that were breaking barriers, you know, that were carving new paths. And that's what they were doing. They were coming down to row. The first documented report of women's rowing at Washington was in 1903. But it didn't really take off until Hiram Conabeer was hired as the coach in 1906. Hiram Conabeer is the classic founder. He's our founder. Even though we had started rowing before he arrived, he is the founder of Washington Rowing. Conabeer was a huge advocate for women's rowing and wanted women to train just as vigorously as the men and to compete. College administrators, however, disagreed. They thought a beauty contest with matching outfits and graceful sculling was more ladylike. And Hiram Conabeer each time pushed back at the University of Washington. He, he would not be stopped. He just would not be stopped. Conditions for the women were dreadful. Their boat shed was cold, leaky, and had no bathroom. They had to trudge through muddy trails at 6 a.m. to get to the men's boathouse to borrow their boats. And they were forbidden to race, but secretly. They'd go around the corner and go full, full power, for sure. <laughs> Over the next decade, Three influential women coaches continued Conabeer's work, growing the program into the most popular athletic activity for women on campus. Then, in 1917, the program abruptly ended. It was Hiram Conabeer dying, so right there they lost their number one advocate. It was World War I starting, so suddenly campus was radically changed. The boathouse was closed. And women's rowing disappeared for five decades. It wasn't until 1968 that rowing returned to campus as a club sport, and again, they put up with inadequate funding, hand-me-down equipment, and harassment from the male rowers. The 70s were marked by this transition that was created by Title IX. 
And so they went from being a club sport to a varsity sport. Conditions improved, but not without strong advocates like athletic administrator Kit Green. Under her guidance, women's sports flourished and the rowing program took off. Because in 1980, Bob Ernst gets hired as the head coach and the women became incredibly competitive and they won the national championship in 1981 and of course then won a national championship in 82 and in 83 and in 84 and in 85. So five national championships in a row. It's never been done since. Another gifted coach followed Ernst. Jan Harville, former Washington rower and women's assistant coach, took over as head coach in 1987. She led the Huskies to 11 Pac-10 championships, three NCAA championships, and was Coach of the Year nine times before retiring in 2003. For the next 13 years, the Husky women continued to perform at the highest level, adding more accolades to the team's storied history. All of those chapters of this history are why we have what we have today. We wouldn't be who we are if it wasn't for those women. And everybody on this team knows that, and they appreciate it. When Yaz came on board in 2016, she inherited a team that was highly motivated. So motivated that in 2017, they became the first school in NCAA history to sweep all three final races and claim the NCAA title. Washington. Then in 2019, the team was poised to sweep their way to the NCAA title again. And nothing sums up the tenacity and grit of the Husky women, present and past, like the epic Varsity 8 comeback race from last to first. Washington now is in sixth. We're coming into the last 500, and guess what? We got speed! Here comes Washington now, moving through Cal. Margins are getting tight. Jump! Jump! Watch City Stream Tuesday nights at 7 on the Seattle Channel or find us anytime online at seattlechannel.org.